What's up, y'all? So, <laughs> I got insomnia, per usual, or whatever. I'm coming to y'all looking real, real, real rough, okay? Real, real tough, real rough, real niggerish with the afro and the... Don't ask, okay? Look, the hair, it, my hair dry shit, I'm not gonna explain. Y'all know me, I'm just gonna get on here like the fuck I get on here, and y'all gonna have to deal with it, okay? So, um, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. Like, comment, cut on the notifications so you'll know, you know, when I post a video, you can think, oh, shit, Miranda just posted a video. Let me watch that. Um, so I wanted to do a reaction video. Shout out to my girl, Natalie. Shout out to my girl, Natalie Love. And let me just say, this ring light is bright as fuck in my face, but I'm too lazy to go over there and cut it down. Um, and this, I have this thing called cramps and they're killing me. So shout out to Natalie for putting me on to this YouTube page, Audit the Audit. And I want to do a reaction video on a, on a video I saw that, that I, that I it, it, it touched me cause I, I got a lot to say about the video. Like it, we just go, we're going to react to it. We're going to go through it together cause this shit <laughs> I love it. Like <laughs> I love it. So uh, let's just let's just get into it. Now I will disclaimer, this is my first time actually trying to pull off a reaction video where I'm doing it on YouTube and then talking to y'all. So if I fuck up, I fuck up. You know, beginner things, you know. We learning together. We learning together. So just Hang in there. But I'm going to see if I can pull this joint off. Pretty sure. I got this. It's cool. And we'll have more of these. Y'all know I already do the reaction videos anyway. So if you got some content, send it to me. Send it to me so we can talk about it. And that's that on that. Um, so let me make sure I am recording. This light is bright as fuck. Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers child abandonment, harboring fugitives, and warrantless entries, and is brought to us by the Greeley Tribune channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Raycon. If you're still using wired headphones in 2021, let me quickly tell you a few reasons on, why you should drop wire the wires head. and pick up a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds. Unlike standard I'm earbuds from other brands, Raycons come in a variety yeah. of colors and patterns, with various oh, fit options for Can ears of all sizes. Like Raycons last six hours continuously on a single charge and oh, offer a just... ton of bass and a noise isolating fit that is perfect for <laughs> <laughs> around 28th, 2019 at 11.14 a.m. Officer audit to get 15% off your order and choose the color that fits your style. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this episode. On June 28, 2019, at 11.14 a.m., Officer Casey Farnham of the Greeley Police Department visited the Greeley, Colorado apartment of mother of three, Rose Perez, to follow up on a call that Ms. Perez's 16-year-old son, Trey, made to the Weld County Dispatch from the apartment complex's main office. In the call, Trey reported that he had missed an Adams County court date that morning because Ms. Perez had allegedly kicked him out and refused to take him to the hearing. Officer Barnum walked up the stairs to the apartment and knocked on the door. Hi. So we're getting a call from your son saying you guys are kicking him out. Uh, I actually just got home. He has a word out for his arrest. Uh, right, out of yes. not doing quarters. Yep, that's right. Yep, that is right. And he's calling us saying okay. you're kicking him out of the house. I just got home from court. Like, literally just walked out of the house. It's been my sister. And he actually hasn't been allowed in my house because he did this <laughs> so, the last time. And I had to do a well she... check because I was at work. So I'd have kicked his ass out, too. 
While Officer Barnum informs Ms. Perez that she cannot refuse to allow her child into her home when she is not there, he does not cite any legal authority for this assertion. Under Section 14-13- Hold up. First of all, how you gonna tell me what I can and cannot do in my goddamn house? Did y'all see that door? Now see, his. It's a it's a double edged sword because I work with kids that are on probation that that come from Harris County Juvenile Probation Department, and we work directly with their mothers. So we do have you know some mothers who want their child to do better. So they put us they put them in our program because we're a transition program, the Trevor Movement, by the way, and you know they want their child to do better. Some of it is court order mentoring, but for the most part, it's a transition from being in jail to being on probation and, you know, trying to find a positive role model and figure in your life. But then you also have mamas that just be like, you know what? I'm done. I can't. It's not in me. Like, bro bad. I got other kids. I ain't got time for the fuck shit. Like, it's only so much... A, a mother can take and my mother no I'm not a mother so I can't speak completely on that because I'm not a mother but from the way I was raised cuz I'm a 90s baby <laughs> and for my for my 80s 90s babies even 70s mama didn't play that okay my granny didn't play that so you gotta go. <laughs> like, if you gonna be kicking my door in, like, either you gonna have to see me, and then after, even if you gonna have to see me, and you gonna have to go. Because this is what we not gonna do. You not gonna disrespect my house. You not gonna disrespect me. You not gonna do this type of fuck shit. No. Because I'm pretty sure he done put her through hell. Let's go back. I just had to get that out. 102 of the Colorado Revised Statutes. A minor is considered abandoned when left without provision for reasonable and necessary care or supervision. And Section 14-6-101 makes it a Class 5 felony to willfully neglect, fail, or refuse to provide reasonable support and maintenance for children under 18. The necessary level of care and supervision will vary depending on the child's age and other relevant circumstances. Section 19-3-604 of the Colorado Revised Statutes, which details when the legal relationship between a parent and child can be terminated by the state, defines abandonment as a situation where the parent has surrendered physical custody of the child for six months or more without showing firm intention to resume physical custody of the child or to make permanent legal arrangements for the care she of the child. She ain't abandoned she just kicked his bad ass out. That requires the care Forgot. and supervision to occur it's in bullshit. the home or grants a child an Then she ain't even kick him out. The parents home. In this she really just said, you can't be here when I'm not here. Sister, and I don't blame Ms. her. Ms. Perez remained in contact with him, and he was still permitted to enter the hall when Ms. Perez was present. Under these circumstances, Officer Barnum would have no legal basis to conclude that Ms. Perez had abandoned her child. Colorado also criminalizes child abandonment Jeez. under the offense of child I abuse, first, uh, which Section 18-6-401 of the Colorado Revised Statutes defines as causing an injury to a child's life or health permitting a child to be unreasonably placed in a situation that poses a threat of injury to the child's life or health, or engaging in a continued pattern of conduct that results in malnourishment, lack of proper medical care, cruel punishment, mistreatment, or an accumulation of injuries that ultimately results in the death of a child or serious bodily injury to a child. Since this law only applies to children under the age of 16, Ms. Perez could not be prosecuted for child abuse for her parenting decisions regarding Trey. However, she could potentially face child abuse charges for allowing Trey in the home around her two young children, particularly mm. if he injured them as this could be considered permitting them to be unreasonably placed in a situation that poses a threat of injury to their life or health. Pause. Y'all heard that? She got two little kids in the house. This motherfucker bad enough to kick the door in. Y'all think he not fucking with them kids? And when I say fucking with, y'all think he not, he not fucking with them kids? Like he not putting his hands on them kids? Doing something to them babies to torture the shit out of them. The Nick, he sound bad as fuck. He sound bad as fuck. And she's trying to protect her younger children from that shit. Because she clearly knows what he's capable of. 
So she, they're right. Like if she sits there and let him be in there and if he put his hands on these little kids or she let them, let him do it, that's child abuse. Like she's trying to protect her babies. And it's like, I, I can't, I don't know what to do. He's 16 years old. Mm. He got a warrant out for his okay. wrist. So I'm pretty sure I know which warrant it is. It was for the incident a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Here, I'm going to come outside. He's not coming from going to the lab for that. Okay. It's not a warrant for that. It was a warrant today because he failed to show up for court. So let me explain to you, officer, what's been going on, okay? So first off, he's kicked my door down before. Okay. The whole entire thing. The other day I was at work, okay. and I can't leave work to come and see what's going on. Yeah, I have that's small right. baby children here. Okay. And exactly. he did She so his I ass. asked him on his birthday, which was Tuesday, to get his butt home. Okay. He, he, he failed to come home. I don't know if he told you that or not, but he failed to come home. Okay. Okay, so he went to my sister-in-law's house and has been there since. Okay. And I told him, if you're not here by Friday morning in order to go to court, Trey, I'm going to court on my own. Okay. Which I did this morning. I went to court on my own. So he there. I went to court on my own. Okay. 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 So he has worn out for his arrest out of Boulder or out of Adams County right now okay. for failure to appear. And the judge specifically told me, I told her everything that happened, as I'm telling you. Okay. And am I kicking him out now? Yeah, he has worn out for his arrest. He's not welcome in my home until he gets that taken care of. Okay. Okay. You can't do that. Yes, I can. He's what? a fugitive. What? Why he, what is it with the you can't do that? Listen, she just clearly said he got a warrant out for his arrest. She stated he was in the house. If he got a warrant out for his arrest, why you not arresting him? You, you defending him and he the one with the warrant out for his arrest. And she like, nah, bruh, like, until you get that shit handled, you can't stay here. Like, you a whole fugitive. <laughs> like, why you not taking him? Why is you on my case telling me what I can and can I do in my goddamn house? You paying some rent in this motherfucker? I didn't think so. What kind of shit is that? Yes, I can. You can come. Listen, yes, I listen. can. What? I listen to you. Okay, well, you I can call that us and come, but you cannot say you can't come in. And if you lock him out, he can kick your door to get in because he Ms. Perez informs Officer Barnum that Trey is not welcome in her home because he is a fugitive and that she will not allow him to return until he takes care of the warrant. Section 18-8-105 of the Colorado Revised Statutes, which defines the criminal offense of being an accessory to crime, prohibits harboring or concealing another individual with the intent to hinder, delay, or prevent their discovery, detection, apprehension, prosecution, conviction, or punishment for the commission of a crime. There are no exceptions to this law for harboring family members or minors. It is feasible that Ms. Perez could be subject to charges under this statute if she allowed Trey into her home, although it may be challenging to prove that she specifically intended to hinder, delay, or prevent his prosecution. By allowing Trey to stay in her home, Ms. Perez could also potentially face charges for contributing to the delinquency of a minor, which sec See, that, that's, that's what she's saying. Like, I'm not harboring no fugitive. Like, like why you ain't going to get him? See, I fucks with her because, for one, she she's trying to protect her, her younger children to avoid a child abuse charge. She's now telling you he has a warrant out for his arrest, which you should already know. And she don't want him in there because that's harboring a fugitive. So, basically, you low-key trying to get me on these charges, telling me I can't do that. No, what I'm not going to do is get a child abuse charge 
and then get a harbor and a fugitive charge. That that's what we not gonna do. That she trying to look, she know that's my kind of god damn it, that's my kind of girl. Section 18-6-701 of the Colorado said, Revised that, Statute I ain't defines caught as inducing, aiding, or encouraging a child to violate any federal or state law, municipal or county ordinance. Well, she is or doing the order. exact opposite. In response to Ms. Perez's argument, Officer law. Barnum states that she is not allowed to and prevent Trey from entering her home, and that if she locks him out, he is allowed to kick down the door to enter. While Trey could possibly be charged with ass. an array of crimes for kicking down the door, depending on the specific circumstances of the incident, at the very least, he could be charged with criminal mischief, more commonly known as vandalism. Section 18-4-501 of the Colorado Revised Statutes defines criminal mischief as knowingly damaging the real or personal property of one or more other individuals, including property owned by the individual jointly with another. Whether the apartment is a rental or owned by Ms. Perez, any intentional damage to the door would be considered criminal mischief. So he's just committing all the fucking Okay, things. I'm going to tell you something. This officer so ass backwards. kick my door. Okay. okay. And if you lock him out, you can't. Okay, I didn't lock him out. My sister Bullshit. Didn't. He is being a habit while my sister is here babysitting my children. He is not welcome here. She needs to call us. You can't kick oh, him out. Oh, we did call you. We did call. We did a well check. They came. The officer came and you can check that. Okay. The officer came and did that. He hasn't been home since until today. Okay. Today he was locked out again. And the reason that he was locked out is because I wasn't home. When I'm home, then he can come. That's not how okay. this works. Okay, that's so sad. Shit. No, Ma'am, listen. That is not how Ms. Perez attempts to end the conversation by entering her apartment and closing the door. And Officer Barnum kicks the door open before she can shut it, which Ms. Perez... Oh, so she is savage. <laughs> like that. Bro, she ain't with the shits, nigga. with the shit like she is i'm sorry y'all i gotta i had to pause it because it just it threw me <laughs> she was like nigga fuck what you talking about i ain't with that bullshit when i'm here then he can be here and she has that she not saying he can't be first of all if if she if he can't be there he can't be there because he clearly got a warrant anyway and he fucking up property so i can call the cops just because you fucking my shit up Second of all, look, I ain't got shit else to say to you, my nigga. Like, too bad. Fuck on with that bullshit. Go, go arrest him. The fuck are you doing fucking with me for? It was the, it was the, she hit that nigga with the, oh, what you doing? Oh, wait a minute now. You, you about to cross the line. <laughs> no, we don't do that. We, we not doing that appears to interpret as an attempt to enter her apartment. Ms. Perez attempts to repel Officer Barnum by shoving him back, and Officer Barnum grabs her by the arm, pulls her out of the apartment, handcuffs her, and informs her he is placing her under arrest. The Fourth Amendment For what? protects citizens from unreasonable governmental intrusion into their homes. As the Supreme Court of Colorado stated in the 1999 case of People v. Lewis, the principal protection for citizens against governmental intrusion into their homes is the requirement that a warrant to enter be based on probable cause. Exactly. In order to enter a home without a warrant, police officers must have probable cause to believe that a crime has been committed, and exigent circumstances necessitating immediate police action must exist. Okay, well, we the the only thing my dentist told me is that I needed to straighten my teeth, and I, I honestly did not have the money to do braces. In Colorado, there are three general categories of exigent circumstances hot pursuit of a fleeing suspect, a risk of immediate destruction of evidence, and yeah, an emergency is a suspect that in the goddamn the house, and you too busy fucking with In this situation, Officer Barnum did not have probable cause that a crime had been committed, nor were there exigent circumstances that justified entering Ms. Perez's apartment without a warrant. Therefore, any entry into the home under these circumstances would be illegal. Section 18-1-705 of the Colorado Revised Statutes well, allows an individual who is in possession or 
control of any building, realty, or other premises to use reasonable and appropriate physical force upon another individual when reasonably necessary to prevent what the individual reasonably believes to be the commission or attempted commission of an unlawful trespass. The First Division of the Colorado Court of Appeals determined in the 1988 case of People v. Lutz that this section is not just applicable to civilians, but it also applies to unlawful entries where the trespassers happen to be police officers. Therefore, if Ms. Perez reasonably believed that Officer Barnum was entering her home illegally, there is a legitimate argument to be made that she had the statutory privilege to resist the unlawful intrusion into the sanctuary of her private home. It is important to bear in mind that this statute does not grant citizens the right to resist an officer's entry into their home if the officer has legitimately acquired probable cause to enter with the complement of exigent circumstances. Which he and it is extremely difficult for the no average warrant, citizen no probable to determine whether an phone. officer's intrusion into their home is legal or not. So it is extremely unwise to physically resist officers who warrantlessly enter a private citizen's home. In situations like this one, it is almost always best to allow the officers to enter the home and challenge the legitimacy of the entry later in court, regardless of whatever statutory privileges may be granted. This is bullshit. It's not worth the risk of mistakenly resisting a lawful entry from police and putting yourself and other occupants of your home in unnecessary danger. After arresting Ms. Perez... That's the only part that's fucked up. Because of the way these fuck-ass cops operate these days is in some cases or in a lot of cases that that block or push or shove or whatever the fuck it was would have got you shot like at this point now it's assaulting a police officer and now i got to tase you damn near shoot you like now i'm finna do a whole like shit like this is how motherfuckers end up losing their life trying to actually protect themselves it's she got babies in there you ain't got no warrant don't come up in my house you period and she not with the shits nigga like the fuck on all that see i can't these fucking officer balls. barnum placed her in the back seat of his police vehicle she demanded to speak with his supervisor sergeant wade corliss who joined officer barnum at the scene Ms. Perez was held in the cruiser for about an hour until Sergeant Corliss ordered Officer Barnum to let her go. Greeley exactly. Police Chief Mark Jones and Deputy Chief Adam Turk visited Ms. Perez at a later date to follow up on the incident. And according to a September 20th, 2019 letter the agency sent to Ms. Perez, the department determined that Officer Barnum's actions, quote, were not appropriate or according to department policy. And, uh, in November 2019, the Greeley PD announced that Officer Barnum was no longer with the department. On June 26, 2020, Ms. Perez filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for the District of Colorado against Officer Barnum, Sergeant Corliss, and the City of Greeley for violation of her Fourth Amendment right. Ms. You Perez better. also alleges that she suffered physical injuries to her left hand and wrist, including pain, swelling, bruising, and decarbentinus synovitis, which is a painful inflammation of tendons at the base of the thumb. He fucked As of up. the date of this video, the litigation yes, is did. ongoing. Overall, Officer Barnum gets an F. For failing to conduct a thorough investigation, displaying a fundamental I'm glad they fired of Colorado's ass. child abandonment laws, and entering Ms. Perez's home without the legal authority to do so. This is yet another case of an officer failing to do their due diligence of understanding the laws they are charged with enforcing, and neglecting to adhere to the boundaries of the Fourth Amendment. Officer Barnum had plenty of time to contact a supervisor to ensure that he was carrying out his duty appropriately, but instead, he of chose to enforce not. his understanding of the law, rather than clarifying do. that he was doing so accurately. Officer Barnum's attempt to enter and Ms. Perez's it? home was totally unnecessary, and is yet Very. another aspect of this encounter that could have been avoided with the advice of a superior officer. The fact that Ms. Perez was detained for nearly an hour only adds to the scope of the Fourth Amendment violations that occurred. And, and she I won that case, too. And really officers that long to determine what that I Ms. Perez's arrest won. was uncalled for. I commend the Greeley and Police she Department have. for their decision to fire Officer Barnum, and I sincerely hope that the department use this encounter as an opportunity to educate all of their officers on the relevant statutes and case law. Ms. Mm. Perez gets an A. And do a plus. She did to dispel the officer's suspicions. She did not allow Officer Barnum to intimidate her, and she followed up this encounter with the proper legal action. Officer Barnum's assertion that Ms. Perez was legally obligated 
obligated to subject her younger children to the violent nature of her older son was beyond ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely see why she was so emotional about the officer's conduct. Although Ms. Perez's decision to push the officer out of her apartment was somewhat reckless, Colorado statutes justify her actions, and it is highly unlikely a court would rule against her in that respect. As always, the courts will consider the totality of circumstances involved in this interaction, and I find it highly unlikely that a court would come to the conclusion that Ms. Perez's obligations to her son outweighed her obligations to her younger children. Much of this interaction stemmed from the poorly executed discretionary decisions of Officer Barnum, and I have no doubt that Ms. Perez will fare well in the courtroom. I commend Ms. Mm -hmm. Perez for standing up for her civil liberties and for exactly. following up this encounter with a lawsuit. Be sure to give your support to the Greeley Tribune for covering this story. You can find a link to their channel in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the... Child, she deserved that A with a plus on the end. Do you hear me? Because sis did not come to play with you motherfuckers. And from what I seen in the comments, she won that lawsuit. And she should have. She should have. Because that shit, baby, you not, first of all, my son got a warrant out for his arrest. That's, now, now let anybody who got a warrant out for their arrest, the cops be about to knock your shit down and get to them. But you sitting there talking about, you can't do that. You can't do that. He's a criminal, obviously, if he got a warrant out for his arrest. The nigga didn't, he didn't go to court. And she did everything she was supposed to do. She went to court. She said they did a well check. She protected her younger kids. I'm, I'm not here to play with you. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, do fucked up. And I, I'm glad he got fired. Because clearly he don't know, he don't need to be on the streets. He don't need to be no police officer. Learn, learn from this. Like the dude said in the video, I hope they use this as a training video or something. Like, you fucked up. And you fucked up even more when you tried to come up in her house. Because she was like, nah, cuz. Not, not this one. Not this one. That's what shit, I done did the same thing. I done did the same thing. It's hard, again, like I said, with her being a mother and that's your child. You want to do everything in the world to protect your child. But there comes a point in life where your child can get too out of control for you. And sometimes you got to teach them hard lessons and put them laws. And clearly the laws are already in his life, especially when you got younger babies because you're not... At this point, you a threat to me, to my babies, to everybody in this house. Like she said, he can be there when I'm there, but when I'm not there, he can't be there. Because who, we don't know what he's going to do if she's not there. Like anything is possible, anything can happen. So if I'm not there to supervise you, my shit, and my little kids, nah. <laughs> like nah, because you can't be here. Because any other time, he probably want to run the streets anyway. He probably don't even want to come home or don't come home half the time. Kicking dough ends and shit. Bitch, you just kick my fucking dough in? Oh, no, nah, take that shit back outside. <laughs> you take that shit back to where you got it from because we ain't even do that here. I, I, I fucks with her. I fucks with her because that was some real shit. I know, and it's, I know it's hard. I know it's hard for her, but at the end of the day, she stood 10 toes down on what the fuck she was saying and that was that on that. Sis said, I, that, that ain't my fucking problem. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the two bands. <laughs> Y'all, this was, <laughs> I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments. I could be wrong, but, you know, y'all let me know. Everybody got an opinion. They like assholes. Everybody got one. So let, let me know how y'all feel about it. Because I said how I feel about it. But, you know, just let me know if you got any other content. Send it to me. Again, I got this from Audit the Audit on the YouTube page. I'll post the link to the original video in the description. Give them their credit. Make sure you go on there and subscribe. They have a lot of good videos. So y'all probably see me react to more from this channel. Again, shout out to Natalie for putting me on this channel and giving me the idea to do more reaction videos. 
Because this is stuff that I talk about. Like y'all know, I get I get into this type of shit. I get into this type of shit. I can pretty much get into a lot of shit, but I definitely get into a lot of shit like this. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. That was my first reaction video. Well, my first YouTube video reaction video. Something like that. In a different way. Y'all get the point. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all on the next one. Bye.